All right, people. Uh, Twisted Builds update. It's been a while. Last update I had, I told you I was fuel injecting a small engine. And uh, it's still going to happen. It's actually going to be this engine. I've got 5 horse Kawasaki. I'm going to do it too. I've got 8 horse Briggs in the back garage. I'm also going to apply it to see, make sure it's a universal fit. But during um, figuring out the code and whatnot, I had in the back of my head, I'm going to need a way to um, put the engine underneath a constant load so I can tune it in. And, you know, I'm going to put an air fuel ratio or like a wideband sensor on it and stuff like that. And I was figuring out I'm going to need a way to put it underneath a consistent load or a variable load. So that way I could tune the engine completely in without it just free revving. Because we all know that um, you can tune an engine free revving, but it's going to run like crap if you don't tune it under load also. So, that led to this idea. And I've been keeping a wrap on it for quite a bit. Um, what I've got going on here is that 5 horse Kawasaki engine, and I've built a small engine dyno. Um, it's made out of just regular angle iron. Um, one inch or one and a half inch pieces. I had um, I got four Lovejoy couplers off eBay, and you can see those there. Two of them for the main shaft, and two of them to square up and hold a brake caliper, which I will show you right here. Um, the brake caliper is buried onto that shaft because it is going or it's hooked with a rod right there to my load cell. It's a 25 pound load cell, and um, well, it's 20. It's rated 25 pounds. I actually checked it, and it's good for 34 under compression. Um, and what I'm doing here is I've got it kind of fooled a little bit. That caliper has some weight to it, even just sitting right there. It's probably about I'm gonna guess about 10, 15 pounds on that scale uh, because it's bearing on the shaft, and there's no actual rigid fixed point until it's on the load cell. So pretty much what's going to happen is when I I'm, I've got an Arduino Mega set up for this unit um, and it reads off the load cell right now and I have it on I'm working on an RPM input. I'm actually have to add a second one. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Um, anyways what's going to happen is because that load cell is under tension right now or compression um, I'm going to set it up so that way the Arduino zeroes out the um, reading with it right here. So whenever you start applying the brakes to that, that whole um, that rod and everything is trying to pull up because the engine's rotating like this. So it's rotating um, clockwise as you're seeing the rotor right here. So because of that, it's going to be pulling up on that load cell. So the weight on it right now, as I said, I'm guessing 5 to 10 pounds, is going to make it um, that much of a wider, um, wider working area or working range out of that load cell. So even though it's rated for 25 pounds, I know it will go to 34 under compression. Um, I'm guessing I can probably get close to 50 pounds out of the way it's set up right here. Um, and I have it, it's, as we all know, um, Horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252. And torque is measured in pound feet. So it's how many pounds is applied to that load cell by the feet from the center of the shaft to your load measurement. I actually have it's like 13 and a half inches, and the Arduino is going to be able to do the math automatically while it's pulling information from the run. Um, going on to how I'm going to get my RPM input for doing um, horsepower and torque well, horsepower calculations and torque torque over RPM um, I have I'm gonna have two pickups one I'm gonna step in front of the light real, real quick one I'm gonna see if I can zoom in yeah, hold on let me rotate this over a little bit here there we go so right there you'll see a bolt that bolts gonna have a VR sensor put onto it uh, it's a variable reluctance sensor it's out of the what you would consider a tail shaft of a Chrysler minivan transmission. Um, I just had one laying around from doing a junkyard replacement. Anyway, that bolt is going to obviously every revolution 
uh, it's going to get picked up by the VR sensor. I'm going to input it into the Arduino. I'm pretty sure I have that part of the code figured out, but I'm going to have to R&D with the code a little bit like normal just to make sure or get all the bugs worked out of it. The second input, because now I am, originally when I set this up, I'm sorry about bouncing all over the place. Anyway, whenever I originally set this up, I had it set up for shaft drive. It was um, Lovejoy coupler direct right from the engine to the um, input shaft on the dyno. When I went to fire the engine up, I found out that that dyno has too much rolling inertia. Um, trying to do that, it, that engine, that 5 horse Kawasaki motor does not have enough snot off idle to do that. So, what I ended up having to figure out is I was going to have to clutch it. Well, that was actually last night. Today I've been working on it most all day, or most after the afternoon, and I made a homemade clutch setup for it. I used to pull garden tractors, and I found out if you modify the clutch to where um, the pulling part of the pulley is straight with the with, from your drive to your driven pulley, and your clutch um, pulley was pressing up in on the lower side that's being returned of the belt from the drive pulley, you get it to where the thing will not slip, ever. Uh, we used to stall, if we had a good clay track that was nice and wet and it was a power track, you would stall the engine out on garden trashes before you'd uh, either spin, or you could either spin the tires or you'd stall the engine out if you had enough traction. The belt would not slip. So I set this up the same exact way. Um, they're both the same size pulleys. I'm pretty sure they're four inch pulleys from Trash Supply. They may be three and a half. I'd have to look at the receipt. Anyway, they're both exactly the same size. So it's a one to one to the, from the engine to the dyno. So that way there should be no gear multiplication or division, you know, that way the reading I'm getting from the dyno should be accurate. Now, as I was saying earlier in my video, I am going to get a second RPM input because of this. If, it, if I was able to do it direct drive right from the engine to the dyno, I wouldn't care. But because I can't do it that way anymore, because obviously, as I said, that, rope, that brake rotor and hub um, is way too heavy for that engine to, f to start off from idle, I'm going to get a second RPM input. I'm going to figure out how to do it inductive from the spark plug wire. Shouldn't be too terrible. Um, that way it's going to be universal. These engines fire kind of like a two-stroke, so they fire every time the piston comes up. Even though they're a four-stroke, it just fires in between intake and exhaust strokes and it doesn't matter. So in the Arduino, I will set it up so that way you can set it up for these style engines that are four-stroke or two-stroke, or engines that actually fire like a four-stroke where it's every other time, and have the correct RPM pickup in the Arduino. So that way it can do uh, RPM comparative between that and the dyno and make sure that belt's not slipping so you can make sure you're getting accurate, accurate data during that run. Um, I'll show you how the clutch works real quick. I made this this afternoon and it's pretty simple. As you saw how the pulley setup is, really in order to disengage it, I have it on an arm right here and you just pull down below this bolt, disengages the belt so you can start the thing then you can run it up on RPM so that way you're not lugging the engine at idle and it slowly <coughs> sorry slowly release the clutch until it engages um, and once you get that done I'm planning on I still have to put a master cylinder on the unit to apply uh, brake fluid pressure and I may I may do it with air I haven't decided yet um, Either which way I go, I might try air first because it's going to be a little easier. I'm still thinking I might have to go hydraulic and might grab a, a master cylinder for the unit. Once I get that done, I still have to put a safety chain on it to make sure that if that load cell were the brake or any of the hardware right there were the brake, um, that unit, because it's on bearings, won't just go over and make a huge mess. So I'm going to put a safety chain underneath the caliper to the bottom yet. Um, I still got to figure out how to do the load for the caliper, or the, applying the caliper again, air or hydraulic. I'm going to try air first. I'm going to put a throttle cable stall set up on it, so that way I'm not doing it by hand. And then put those two RPM sensors into it. 
and then I should be ready to do dyno pulls. Um, the Arduino Mega that I'm coding for it, or building for it, is also going to have a couple extra inputs. So it's going to have um, ambient temp, it's going to have, I, I may do a cylinder head temp, I'm not totally sure on that. Pretty much build a weather station so that way you can compare runs from one day to the next if the weather changes. So that way, because I'm working with a five horse, the power changes should be very minimal. Um, and because of that, you don't want weather screwing that up. So I'll pretty much build in a little weather station for it so that way it could accommodate and do corrections. Um, and as I said, the reason I built this was because of the fact I needed something. That motor eventually is getting Arduino EFI. It's going to be Arduino Uno. Um, they already have, guys already have Arduino Megas out for EFI control. It's called Speedino. And those are more geared towards like four to eight cylinder engines. You can put them on a smaller engine too. But it, to get the whole unit, you're looking at about 200 bucks. And honestly, for a small engine, I don't really want to spend that much money to put EFI on something I'm probably going to put on a drift trike. So I built and coded my own Udo. Arduino Uno, which I'm literally gearing towards one and two cylinder engines, the end. Right now it's coded for fuel control only. It would still have ignition control from the uh, factory ignition on these engines, which is a coil that is a magnet, magnetic inductive coil. Pretty much there's a uh, magnet on the flywheel that rotates around the coil, and that's what cr or creates your spark. Um, I might go into ignition control. I would really love to have ignition control with an Uno, and I think I can do it. Um, but again, I'm just gearing, tor gearing it towards a one-cylinder engine. And also, and this is, I'm going to start pumping a ton of videos out using this because I want to do some oddball stuff. <laughs> like, I've got a GM supercharger I plan on belt driving off of that engine or of 8-horse Briggs. And do like an A and B test before supercharging, after supercharging, and like change pulley sizes and see how much boost pressure changes, and um, see you know obviously power difference using a dyno. Um, want to do head work like um, I have the ability to weld aluminum now, so clean up the head, weld it up, use a mill which. I'll take video of how I'm going to do that too, but anyway, use a mill and change chamber design, change compression ratio. Um, one cylinder engines, I used to when I was younger, also weld up and regrind my own cams. So I'd like to try that too. Um, it might not be on that specific motor, I might do it on, I ha also have a 5 Force Briggs, which those, um, it's a Raptor engine, and I have professionally made cams for it, like swap cams between you know, cam A to cam B and do cam tests, give you all the specs, you know, this is what it made before, made after, you know, air filter on, air filter off, exhaust, tuning on a small engine, you know, short long bends, velocity stack at the end of the pipe, and so on and so forth, just to see the differences. And that's where, like, a lot of that stuff is going to come in very handy to have my own weather station as a part of the dyno to make sure it's not, oh, I'm seeing an increase or a decrease because the weather changed. So a lot of those videos are going to start coming out from Twisted Builds. Um, and I'm going to also take video. I've got screen, um, screen recording software now, so I'm going to show you how to do some of the coding for stuff like that. Um, and pretty much go from there. And I'm just, this is a fun project I've been wanting to do for a while and I've always, always wanted to have my own dyno at home just because playing with this small engine stuff is a blast. It's cheap. It's a blast and you can see small improvements on it from here to there. We used to see it all the time tractor pulling. I know guys use these for go-karts and for um, lawnmower racing and stuff like that. So it, I'm just kind of excited to try all these little different things and being able to see positive or negative results um, from this dyno and just build little horsepowers pretty much. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, as I said, there will be more videos coming out. Um, later in this, actually coming right up in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to start it up, disengage the clutch, and run it up an RPM and show you it working 
with um, pretty much the belt drive and driving the rotor, it's not obviously the brakes or the brake caliper is not applying any pressure to it. But it'll at least show you that I have a working theory and I just need to get the rest of the stuff put on this unit so that way I can get it functional and start doing dyno pulls. That should be coming shortly, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, and we'll go from there.